All right, so filter design, we're going to work on uh, IIR filter. Um, it's normally, you see, and they talk about time invariant systems or causal systems, and this is just basically a filter. So IIR filter, let me just see if I can write here. You get two types of digital filters. The first one's an IIR infinite impulse response filter or a FIR, which is a finite impulse response filter. Infinite impulse response filter is um, the one I'm going to show you with pole zero placement. So there's lots of ways of designing filter. I'm just showing the, the pole zero placement one. Now the IR filter looks like this. This is the structure for it. Let me just copy a bit. The structure looks like this. So depends on what software you have to write in. This is the, what you'll have to program. You have to, you've got an input signal here. So in here, they, this will be your input signal, your voltages, your temperature. So all your voltages from your analog pin. If it's a Arduino Uno, this will come from the analog pin. A FPGA will come from the analog pin. So this is your values. This is like 30 degrees Celsius will come in here, or 31 degrees Celsius will come in here. But your noisy signal will come in this side. The noisy signal will come in this side. Then there's some mass that you need to do, we we'll discuss this now, and then the smooth signal will pop out the other side. This is a point by point system. So um, what will happen is, and that's where they talk about the linear time invariant uh, system or the causal system. It means when you get a certain value here, the moment you read in a, a value here like three, that specific moment there will be an output on the output maybe 3.1 but they will be as you read a value in this value out so your system runs there's no delay so how does it work when you have to program this these little z blocks here so now these little z blocks here they are shift registers so still remember shift registers whenever you did shift registers you get serial in serial out parallel in parallel out but what happens if, if this is in a while loop this would be the previous value. So let's just try and explain that quick. Let's say we put the value here. This is plus. So you can see information is coming here from the bottom. These ones are multiply with coefficients. This is specific values, multiply with coefficients. So three plus whatever value coming here, you're gonna get a value here. Let's say, for instance, that was a value coming here was 0 0.1. So here you would, would have the value 3.1. Then this 3.1 will go to the shift register, 3,1, and it will stay there. The next cycle, when you get a value here, maybe the next value, I'm going to change color here, maybe the next color here is going to be 4, so 3 is gone. So whatever that value is, whatever added to it might be something else. Let's say it's now 0, 0,2 for some reason. We'll get to the maths later. Then it means the value here now would be 4,2. But now the value, this is this delay means that now we have 3.1 there. So one cycle later, this value is stored. So if you do a Pico uh, Arduino, you have to store this value. That was the previous value. Does it make sense? That was the previous value. So if we read a new value there, let's say 5. Let's change the color there. So my next value there is maybe a 5. It means this 4.3 is now going to move that 3.3 is going to move away that 4.3 is going to move there now with the 5 whatever is added to it was going to move there so that is always the value it was there before does it make sense it was the value that was there before this one can you see that the value here is going to be that value and that value is the before value of that one so it's like a serial in parallel out type of uh, shift register if it makes sense let's quickly just do it again just try and explain what's going to happen here so again you can program this must be either programmed in assembler or c plus plus or java or whatever program you're writing in uh, vhdl or in lab view this is going to be graphical but the first time you get a value in, let's say that value after the addition there was maybe a 3. 
So after the addition, the first value there was 3. What happens in the next cycle? Now we get a 4 in. So this 3 moves through the shift register to here. Whatever value there, let's say the next value there was a 4 after the added and so. Then the moment we get a next value in, let's say our next value there, it's a 5. So what's going to happen? It means that 3 would have moved there. That 4 that was there is going to move there. And the next value there is going to be a 5. And if we get a next value in, a 6 or a 7, then what's going to happen next? That 5 was going to go there, the 4 was going to go there, and the new value of 7 is going to sit there. You get the shift register. So every time we get a new value, it moves these values down. And then this 5 would be multiplied with something. This 4 will be multiplied with something. That 7 will be multiplied with something. All of them would be added together, giving you your output. Now we're going to calculate how to do that multiply with somethings just now. And those multiply with something, that value, that constant value that we multiply there, that is the one we do with pull zero placement. So hopefully you understand this. So in real life, you'll have like a black box, an analog input, maybe an output or a needle output or a logging output with this filter inside there. And we have to calculate the values there.